This is a brief introduction to gradually varying flow profiles for open channel flow, focusing on steep and mild slope GVM. Now, gradually varying flow does not refer to a change in the flow rate. We're talking about a change in the depth as you move up or down the channel. So we're not talking about flow changes with time, we're talking about flow depth at a fixed Q at different positions in the channel. Gradually varying flows may occur whenever the flow depth is perturbed from the normal depth. But it's only possible under a limited range of conditions. We call these the GVF water surface profiles. If you cannot find a GVF profile, that fits a particular case you're looking at, then any adjustment to the normal depth must occur through a rapidly varying flow that occurs over a short distance rather than a gradually varying flow that occurs over a longer distance. We graph GVF profiles as relationships between the normal depth and the critical depth. We have different profiles for steep, mild, critical, horizontal, and adverse slopes. Recall that a steep slope is one where the normal depth is less than the critical depth. That is, the flow wants to be shallow and fast. A mild slope is one where the normal depth is deeper than the critical depth. That is, the flow wants to be deep and slow. A critical slope is where these two depths are exactly equal. That is, the flow wants to be at a fruit number of 1 where the flow velocity is equal to the wave velocity. Horizontal slopes don't have a normal depth. You can confirm that by looking at the Chessy Manning equation for normal flow. Horizontal slopes are where S0, our bottom slope, is exactly 0. We can also have conditions where the slope is less than 0, that is, where some place where the channel bottom actually slopes uphill in the direction of flow. Again, there can be no normal depth under a condition like this. Now, a steep slope is a condition where we have a normal depth that is less than the critical depth. Let's imagine where something in the channel, we don't know what at this point, but something forces the water level down below the normal depth. So now this is a supercritical flow that's shallower than it wants to be. A gradually varying flow response curve exists for this case, and the response is a slow increase in the water depth going downstream until the normal depth is reached. Now this meets our ideas of a supercritical flow can only adjust in the downstream direction because waves can't propagate upstream. So information that the water level has been forced down in a supercritical flow can't be used to make an adjustment slowly upstream. Now let's consider a steep slope. Again, here's our y naught that's less than our critical depth. But we imagine something that forces the water level up above the normal depth, but still below the critical depth. So when this happens, we find that there's a gradually varying flow response where the water level going downstream from the perturbation will move back slowly to the normal depth. Again, this is a supercritical response, so the flow adjustment is downstream. Now let's imagine the third possible case. That is, we have, again, our steep slope. But now we want to think about what happens when something forces the water level up above the critical depth. Now the flow is subcritical, but it wants to be back at the normal depth. There's a gradually varying flow response curve that moves back towards normal, but it cannot cross the critical depth. There are no GVF curves that actually cross the critical depth. They come down close to it, but crossing the critical depth takes a rapidly varying flow response and we will talk about that in another section. The important point here is that when we're subcritical, 
even if we're on a steep slope, the GVF response is moving upstream, not downstream. Now let's look at a mild slope. A mild slope occurs where the normal depth is deeper than the critical depth. We once again have three possibilities. Let's take a look at the first one, where something forces the water level down below the critical depth. Now in this case, the flow is super critical. It wants to get up to the normal depth. And there's a GVF curve adjusting downstream because this is a supercritical flow that moves up towards the normal depth. But it can't cross the critical depth in a gradually varying flow. There will be a rapidly varying response across that. Again, looking at a mild slope, there's our normal depth, our critical depth. Now we consider where something forces the water level down below the normal depth but now you're still above the critical depth. In this case, you're a subcritical flow, but you are below the normal depth. The adjustment now is upstream. There's a GVF response curve. The water surface profile adjusts upstream to move back to the normal depth. Now we've got the mild slope where something forces the water level up above the normal depth. Again, we're subcritical, so we expect an adjustment upstream. Indeed, we have a GVF response profile that goes upstream and meets back at the normal flow depth. Now, we can make similar profiles for critical, horizontal, and adverse slopes. There's slight differences in each one, but similar arguments are made to get to these. You'll find these in the class notes and in pretty much every open channel flow textbooks. The key points I want to emphasize are that supercritical flows always adjust downstream. Whether you're on a steep slope or a mild slope, the question is not the slope, it's whether the flow has been perturbed into a supercritical regime or into a subcritical regime. If the flow is subcritical, the adjustment is upstream. The gradually varying flow is always adjusting towards normal, but it cannot cross the critical depth of the GVF. Only rapidly varying flows will cross the critical depth in a single profile. We'll see some places where Later on, where flow does move downstream across smoothly across the critical depth when moving between two very different channels. And that ends our discussion of gradually varying flow profiles.